Hello and welcome to another video. Now, I used to live in Sweden and Herring is a social institution. Um, Herring in Swedish is called Sil and it is um, basically prepared a bunch of different ways, but the classic way of preparing it is to pickle it. Swedes love to pickle herring. They love to put everything you can imagine in pickled herring. I have seen pickled herring with blueberries, cranberries, curry, sour cream, um, uh, mustard and onions, you name it. And so we're going to talk about how to do that today. I was really fortunate. I managed to get a kilogram of herring at the store. And so we're going to be able to go ahead and make um, pickled herring today. Now this is actually a slightly complicated process and <clears throat> if you want to understand it better there are two videos that you should also watch here. The first one is my Gravlax video um, which covers dry brining salmon and the second one is my Swedish pizza salad video which covers wet brining cabbage. Now um, both wet brining and dry brining can be used with pickled herring and are both traditional. I'm going to do dry brining today because most of the tutorials I found online cover wet brining and I think dry brining is actually easier to work with. So we're going to go ahead and do that, especially with fish. Um, anyway, this process is a little bit complex. You probably want to start with Gravlax and then work your way up to this once you're happy with it. But Gravlax is just dry brined salmon and herbs. Here we take our brined fish and then we pickle it. The reason we do that is that if you don't brine the fish, um, it's still full of water when you put it into the pickling and the fish will disintegrate. So we have to brine it to remove liquid and then we will go ahead and, um, and then we'll go ahead and pickle it. So um, with that being said, Let's, uh, let's talk ingredients. Now, right now we're in the brining stage, so we only have a few ingredients. Um, I have about a kilogram, or about two pounds, of uh, herring fillets. I managed to get about a kilogram of fresh herring at the store, and I filleted it myself. You can use other smallish white fish, preferably with the skin on, um, but uh, herring is like the traditional one to use. Um, I now have equal parts salt and sugar. This is about half a cup of each. And um, I have uh, one to two tablespoons of black pepper. Now the black pepper is completely optional, but I like to use it here. And uh, these three things are going to become the dry brine. The dry brine is going to pull the water out of the fish and leave a nice firm fish for us to work with. Um, anyway, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and just mix these together and then we'll go ahead and brine. I'm going to brine them in a pot. You could use another container, but that's what we're going to use today. So the dry brining process is actually pretty simple. I'm going to start with a handful of the dry brining stuff, uh, the mixture after I've mixed it together, maybe two handfuls at the beginning, and I spread it on the bottom of my pot. And then on this, I'm going to layer my fish. And then basically I'm going to layer uh, brine mixture and fish together until I am done. If you like to be meticulous like I do, you can rotate these 90 degrees on each layer. But basically, what's going to happen is that the osmotic pressure on this um, from the salt is going to uh, suck all of the water, a lot of the water out of the fish. Also, note that when I fillet these, I uh, I didn't worry about the bones. There's some bones left in. Um, as we go through the pickling process, um, the bones will partially dissolve, so that's not a problem. Also, the reason why we use sugar as well as salt is that otherwise it would take a lot more salt and this reduces the saltiness of the final product. 
So just going to keep stacking these on here. This is fairly simple. And then we're going to leave this in the refrigerator um, overnight. And we'll be back tomorrow um, where these will all be uh, um, sort of probably at that point sitting in a liquid. Now, if you really want to be um, meticulous about things, you could rotate these every while. Personally, I don't see a need to do that. I'm just going to put a little bit of brine um, on the top. Um, and what you'll find by tomorrow is that these will be sitting in a liquid brine. So this will go in the refrigerator and we'll be, we'll be back tomorrow. Hello and welcome back. Now, um, it's been a day. I actually decided to dry brine the herring for only about eight hours. I could have done it for more, but uh, as you'll see, they get pretty nicely um, dehydrated pretty quickly uh, in a dry brine. And so uh, if you do it too long, then you have to soak them in water. So I rinsed off the brine after about um, eight hours. And uh, basically at that point, the whole sugar salt mixture was a slush, kind of had a slushy consistency and the fish was starting to get kind of dry. Now the key thing here is that the top fish are gonna be less dry than the bottom fish because the bottom fish had more weight on them. So we're gonna take that into account as we move forward um, because we want to eat the less dehydrated fish first. So um, with that in mind, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get started here. And uh, this part's not gonna take too long. Um, then we'll put it in the refrigerator for at least a day and at most maybe a month or two, and it'll all be good to go. So for the ingredients of this part, we have half a liter of cider vinegar. Uh, we have the fish from yesterday, and I dry brine these in, for about eight hours, and then I just rinsed them off and put them back in the same container. Um, you can see that they are a lot um, firmer than they were before. And some of the ones towards the bottom, you'll see bones protruding. Don't really worry about the bones because the vinegar will help break them down. Um, and uh, so, yeah, the, the, if, you didn't, if you didn't brine them, they would basically disintegrate in the vinegar slowly as, as the vinegar basically cooks them. Then I have about one or maybe two tablespoons of uh, salt, uh, sorry, one or two tablespoons of sugar. Um, I have a lemon that I'll thinly slice. I have an onion that I'll thinly slice. And then I have some spices here and I just wanna go over the spices specifically. And the spices, uh, I decided to base it on a recipe for something called gloss masta um, seal, which means glass blower or glass master um, herring. Uh, I have a few bay leaves here. Normally I was shooting for two large bay leaves, but uh, ended up with basically three and a half small ones uh, and one large one. Uh, I have some allspice, uh, maybe a half a teaspoon or so. I have some peppercorns, um, maybe a teaspoon or so of mustard. And then uh, some, you know, just a few uh, juniper berries, which I decided to throw in. Those are not perfectly traditional. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Now, to make the pickling brine, I'm going to take my um, my spices and my sugar and my vinegar. I'm going to pour them into this pot and I'm going to set it to boil. Once it boils, I'm going to let it boil for about, I'm going to let it simmer for about five minutes and uh, then the brine will be uh, set aside to cool. 
So dry brining tends to brine fish a little unevenly. So I'm actually going to take these out of here and I'm going to stack them up so that the ones on the top are on the bottom. And in doing so, I'm going to make sure that when I put them in the jar, that those which were on the top are on the top. Um, that means that I will eat the ones that did not brine as much first so that uh, so that they get eaten first and then those which have been really heavily brined like these uh, near the bottom will get eaten last and will still hold together. Um, also throughout the pickling process uh, some of the salt that's been in here is going to uh, slowly um, slowly um, come out. And that's actually really uh, important because um, if you, if I could have dry brined these for like 24 hours, but then I probably want to soak them in water. Um, it's also a good reason to add sugar to your dry brines because then this is full of both salt and sugar rather than just uh, salt. So now we're ready to arrange the fish and we're going to put them, we're going to try to make sure that the nice shiny side is out so we're going to go ahead and put them in here again i'm trying to make sure that the ones which are on the bottom are still on the bottom and i'm basically going to curl them up and wrap them around until uh, until i'm basically done with a layer when i'm done with a layer i'm going to go ahead and add some lemons and uh, some onions on top of the layer and we'll go from there. That yeah, seems like a end of a layer there. So let's add a little bit of onion. Uh, and I've arranged the onion, the lemons over here so that the least presentable ones are over on this side. So I'm going to put them in first so that I have the nicest looking pieces at the top. And then I'm going to basically do another round. Now, it's possible that I won't have enough brine. Uh, at that point, I could either top it off with more vinegar or I could make more brine. And I haven't really decided what I'll do at this point. Um, but I will figure that out when I'm done, um, when I'm at that point. Uh, the thing is that whether you have enough brine or not also depends upon how tightly packed the fish are. So, um, so you have to prepare to be just a little bit, um, flexible in that department. But it looks like I'm going to get about three layers. And this is a one and a half liter container. My guess is that the brine will be fine. Take this smallish piece. And roll this up nice and tight. And then some more. The rest of pieces here, a couple of these pieces. And then finally, our last piece. main thing is once I add the brine, I want uh, the fish to be completely submerged in it. So in that case, I may just make a little more brine. Same basic recipe. You can eyeball stuff. It's not that important. Oh, and you know what? I got these in backwards. It's not the end of the world, but 
it does look nicer if the uh, skins are to the outside. No, this one's the least rind of the three, so let me put it in nicely rolled. Oh, again, wrong way. And for these last two, I'm just going to fold them over on the top so that they um, so that they don't take up a lot of vertical space. And then just a few more onions, a few more pieces of lemon, and then we're going to pour the brine over. We'll see how much more brine we would need. And it looks like we don't need any more rain. In fact, I have almost too much brine. <laughs> so I'm going to scoop out the rest of the spices. And I'm going to fill this about as full as I dare. And then this will go in the refrigerator overnight. Uh, you want to let it sit for at least a day. Then I'll be back to do a taste test. And here we have our pickled herring. So now this has been in the um, refrigerator for about a day. And we're going to go ahead and do a very simple uh, plating of our presentation of this on just a piece of bread with butter. Uh, of course, in Sweden, you usually put it with cheese also, a, typically a very sharp cheese like um, like Vasterbotten, um Ost or, or, or something like that. Um, I don't really have a suitable cheese right now for that. Um, but even if I did, since, this, since I'm trying to taste the herring primarily, um, I'm going to go ahead and just put this on bread with butter. So let's go ahead and, and get started with that. So um, for the taste test, I mean, you can use normal bread, but of course in Sweden, very typically they would uh, use a crisp bread. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just take a piece of pickled herring here. I've sliced off of one of the top fillets, and you'll note that I didn't worry about the fact that there are bones in it. That's because even after just one day, the bones are going to become uh, completely edible. And then finally, um, I grabbed a ring or two, uh, or two rings of uh, the pickled onion slices off of the top, and I'm just going to lay those on top. So here we have um, a piece of pickled herring, and uh, next up is the taste test. So quite often, when I pick up pickled herring at the store, it's too sweet or too sour. Um, <clears throat> this is this is really really good. Um, just a hair on the sour side, but um, this is this is really 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 good. Um, definitely the dry brining in salt and sugar. Um, rather than the wet brining that most of the recipes will tell you to do, uh, contributes to a fish which is um, uh, dense, but not too chewy, not too salty, 
not too sweet. And I think, you know, if I had a piece of, of um, if I had a piece of cheese with this, this would be just perfect. So uh, I'm really, really, really happy with how this came out. It's, it's really, really good. I encourage everyone else to try this. Um, you don't even have to use herring. Just use any small ocean fish where you have the skin still attached to the fillets and it'll be good. Anyway, thank you so much. Uh, bon appetit and uh, see you next week.